reader as a child. I got a lot of comic books at home, y'all. I remember reading uh, an episode of Spider-Man. It was an old comic book. I think it came out in 1962. It was an issue of the Amazing Spider-Man. I'm a geek like that. But I began to read this comic book and after Spider-Man got his great power, uh, brothers and sisters, he did not do what he was supposed to do. So I think, brothers and sisters, that the Lord got his attention because after he didn't do what he was supposed to do and what he was supposed to do was stop crime. But what he was doing was making money. So what happened was that there was a, a misfit, a robber, uh, who ran right past him and he said, hey, that ain't my problem. And after the misfit ran right past him, he went and killed his uncle. Y'all not listening to me today. So what I'm sharing with you is after the narrative of what he didn't do right, uh, the narrative was that with great power comes great responsibility. What I'm sharing with us today, brothers and sisters, that God has given the church great power. And with the power that God has given us, there is also a great responsibility. In other words, what I'm sharing with you, brothers and sisters, God is entrusting us the keys, but God is entrusting us the keys not for us to use it for ourselves, but God is entrusting us the keys to use it to help somebody else. So Jesus entrusts in us. But he also expects of us. Touch your neighbor, wake him up. <laughs> Jesus entrusts in us. But understand that God also expects of us. With that being said, it is essential for believers to appreciate uh, or appreciate a number of things. The first, uh, as I look at the text, the first is the importance of the mandate. The importance of the mandate. Preach to myself in a minute, I'm gonna get happy on my own. Y'all gonna think I'm crazy up here, but I'm gonna preach to myself. First, we gotta understand the importance of the mandate. The mandate, brothers and sisters, is the command of Jesus Christ to each believer up in here to share the good news of the gospel to every creature that they come in contact with. God has given you and I a mandate. God has given you a mandate. Therefore, I beseech you that if you don't understand anything else about our faith, understand the gospel. You've got to understand the gospel. The gospel is the saving work of God through Jesus Christ. The gospel calls us to a deeper level of faith in him. The gospel is the reason that you are here right now. The gospel is the reason for our faith. The gospel is the reason that we sing in the choir. The gospel is the reason that we connect with each other. The gospel. Gospel is the good news. Romans 1 16, the apostle Paul describes it like this when 
He said, I am not ashamed of the gospel. I don't know about you, but I ain't ashamed of the gospel. For it is the power of God to salvation to everyone that believeth. In other words, brothers and sisters, the gospel is the reason why we can say amazing grace, how sweet the sound. The saved, a wretch. I think in the 21st century, they might say a ratchet person like me. The commission of the gospel was so very important, brothers and sisters, that Jesus not only says it one time, uh, Dr. Fowler, but he says it many times. And I want us to know, brothers and sisters, that Jesus not only says it one time, but he says it over and over and over and over again. Many of us think that the Great Commission only comes in Matthew 28. But brothers and sisters, Jesus uh, had the commission on his mind so much so that he talks about it in every gospel. Not only every gospel, he turns around right before he ascends to the Lord in our text today and he says the same thing. So we've got to understand, brothers and sisters, that there is a mandate for us to spread the gospel. Not only is there the importance of mandate, in the mandate, brothers and sisters, there's uh, God uh, mandate, mandates us to witness. Y'all heard the song up here, didn't you? I know it sounds real good, but how does it play out in your life? And I pray that at some point in our lives, that we get to moving and grooving so good to the sound that we can move and groove to the mandate as we leave the four walls of this church. There is a mandate of witness. Somebody say, well, Reverend, let you, uh, let's walk to the text. I'm glad you asked me that in the text, Jesus reiterates on the fact that his disciples shall be witnesses. Verse 8, Jesus summons the disciples to be witnesses and I'd implore you to understand that there is great importance to a good witness. Uh, and I know our chief can attest to that, brothers and sisters, there is good or great importance to good witness. The Lord calls us to be good witness. I'll say this to you, brothers and sisters, a case is won or lost based upon the character of a witness. I, I, I am a fan of ID. I think it's, uh, uh, it, it's uh, investigation discovery. I watch that channel a lot. And I've seen brothers and sisters where a case went to trial. And the case was won or lost upon the character of a witness. Y'all still missing your shout right now. What I'm sharing with you today is, brothers and sisters, that the world is watching you. And the God's case will be won or lost based upon the character of your witness. In other words, they watching you to see, has God changed their life? Has God changed their heart? Why do I have to come to church if they are acting the same way? Little Pookie and Ray Ray out down the street. So there is a mandate good witness. 
And I pray today as you leave this place that if your witness is not as good as it should be, I pray that God, God has given us another opportunity that if our witness is not as good as it should be, God has given us another opportunity to walk outside of this church today and say, I thank God that God is king and God is savior up and over my life. We got to be good witnesses because God is pleading a case and he's pleading the case with the unsaved and sometimes our witness can make or destroy a case.